Yeah. All right, recording is started. Uh, welcome everyone. Uh, it's the Git plugin office hours for the performance improvement project. Rishabh, take it away. Yeah, so I'm sharing. Uh, you have to enable screen oh, sharing. Oh, Mark. right. Once again, Mark is failing to do the security thing. You can now share your screen, Rishabh. So for today's agenda, the first thing we have to discuss is adapting the benchmark and code inside the Git client plugin. So Mark, you were saying yesterday that I think it's 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 a it's an issue that the benchmarks they take a long they, they take a long duration to run, and if anyone is changing the code for anything, it's I think it's unnecessary for the benchmarks to run right now for every build that we create for every PR that everyone raises. So you were saying that we should change, change, change that. Uh, uh, what what change were you suggesting? Uh, that's I, I could not understand at the time when you wrote that. And, so and were I'm you not... saying that we should remove it from the Jen Jenkins build file? The, the, the flow, the Jenkins file, should we remove it from there? No, I think I think well. This is this is a great chance for the mentors to kick to, to to give help. I think one of the techniques we could do is we could say, put in the Jenkins file a condition which says if the if the Jenkins URL environment variable is ci.jenkins.io and if the branch is master, then run the benchmarks. Or we could also okay. say if the branch name is and choose a name that's symbolic that says GSOC, you know, GSOC star. If it matches GSOC star, then we say we'll run it there. And the typical PRs won't use that name and therefore won't run the benchmarks on those pull requests. So I think we, we absolutely want it on master and we absolutely want it on your pull request. So that, okay. that means we need some conditional logic in the Jenkins file that says if we're on this branch, do it if we're not on that branch or we're not on ci.jenkins.io, don't do it. Okay, I, I understand. Conditional logic in Jenkins. Now the, let's let's let the other other main other mentors kick in. Does that seem reasonable to everyone else, or do you have other ideas or better suggestions to reduce to reduce the load? So uh, it it uh, simply means like we are supporting the wildcard over here. Just if I'm not wrong. Over here. I don't understand the question, Omkar. So uh, what I'm asking is like the conditional logic is it's uh, simply based on like wildcard, like uh, master star or uh, GSOC star like that. The, I, that's And that's yeah. something whoever does the, probably Rishab actually, when you yeah. write the, the entry in the Jenkins file, you have to figure out, is there a way to do a wildcard pattern match? I think Groovy has wildcard string matching, but you'll have to go figure that out. I. I don't remember. I have, I always have to go look it up. Okay. Yeah, you should be able to do something like uh, you should be able to do something like that. I mean, you may not even need that necessarily. I mean, if you decided that master and then like some GSOC branch name are the ones that you wanted, then that then that will work. Or maybe you're perhaps thinking that maybe there'd be multiple GSOC branches. Yeah, my assumption is yeah, could be, yeah. any any branch that starts with GSOC dash, so make it a wildcard yeah. match so that he has the chance to run multiple branches in parallel. Yeah, I mean, Groovy's just Java with syntactic sugar, so you could do a starts with <laughs> for, for that case. Um, and then for like the Jenkins URL, there's a uppercase Jenkins underscore URL environment variable you could use to to determine that you're in ci.jenkins.io. Well, and and Rishab, just to be fair, yeah. it, it may be that the Jenkins URL check is unnecessary. Um, the, the Git plugin is somewhat special in that one of the maintainers runs his own CI infrastructure and cares very much about it. <laughs> but that's kind of weird. Most, most maintainers actually don't run their own dedicated CI setup with lots of agents, et cetera. So if you skip the Jenkins URL and just checked on branch name, that's probably still already good enough. Okay, okay. And if if there is any yeah. question there in terms of the of the how to express that in the pipeline script, 
uh, you can ask in the Git plugin channel or in the pipeline authoring SIG channel. They're both more than happy to help. Okay. I'm going to research about it and then if I have some doubts, I'll ask. Great. Okay. So um, then the next, uh, the next thing we have on the agenda is the current status with the tasks I have. So I've been working on the Git redundant fetch issue. Mostly that's where I've spent my time. First, uh, the first thing I did uh, with the fix was to uh, first solve the current issues we had. Uh, those were the test failures I had uh, for that PR and I fixed those. And during that process, I learned that uh, there are a lot of scenarios I missed. And so for that, I think first I should discuss what the issue is then and then go for the solution and possibly the scenarios I have to think about. So, okay. So I've explained the issue in a PR I have. So basically in the checkout step in our Git plugin, we are for we, when we are cloning the repository for the first time, what happens is that we, we use this API clone under underscore, and this is essentially git init plus git fetch step. It's not a git clone actually, but it, it gives the user uh, all the functionalities a clone can give. So uh, that is why, so we, we do this first and then we have another, another git fetch, which I, I, uh, my assumption is that we have the second git fetch because we want, um, for an example, if I have a fork repository and I mention it as a repository URL, and if I have, uh, uh, if I have five more commits in it, so the difference I can, uh, in the commits, I can, um, I can uh, get that through the build when I'm running the build. So that is one of the possible use cases I could understand of having the second fetch. And um, so this is the why, Mark. Could you, uh, could you jump in here and explain? This is my assumption. Is, is this correct? Or uh, is there a larger reason to why we have the second fetch? I, I, I think the second fetch, fetch is a terrible accident, most likely. And it's an accident that has existed for a very long time. So I wish I could give you a better answer, Rishab. It's embarrassing to say I can't give you a better answer, but I That's suspect okay. that second fetch is accidental or accidental is too strong, is a funny word for it, but it, that, that second fetch is, is, is there and it's been there for a very long time. Yeah, that, okay, so. That's okay. That's not important. I think the solution and this, uh, the things we have to care about are more important. So uh, I'll, I'll show the fix I have uh, created for it. So the fix is very simple. I just created a Boolean flag. And if we are cloning the repository for the first time, then it's true. And we basically skip the, the second fetch if we have used git, clo uh, git in it as git fetch. Uh, for the first time. So this is the solution I provided at the time I was writing the proposal. Now, uh, the things we have to consider when we are doing, when, when we are fixing this issue, when we are avoiding the second fetch. So uh, one of the first things is, one of the first thing we have to consider is the possible options we are providing with the first, with the clone, with the clone behaviors we have and the fetch behaviors we have. Uh, the the decoration of the fetch command and the decoration of the clone command. The second is the uh, is the repository data. When when I am uh, avoiding the second fetch, I have to make sure that there is no loss of repository data when I'm doing so. So for for that, the uh, only option which for the repository data loss or loss or possible loss the only option which is of concern is the honor honoring of respect uh, at initial clone and for that we have some uh, scenarios i i have mentioned in the pr so what could happen with uh, when we're using honoring respect at initial cl clone or we're not using it so if we're using honoring respect at initial clone uh, if our respect is narrow, and if we are, um, and if the second fetch is being ignored, we have to make sure that. Uh, wait a second, I think I'm confused there. If uh, if we're using honor respect, 
so if so first of all let's let's talk about if we are not using on a ref spec so if we are not uni- using on a ref spec the git clone the git clone api it's it's it basically assumes that it's going to fetch all the branches instead of even if i've given the ref spec it's going to fetch all the branches and that happens because uh, we couldn't break a func- we couldn't break an existing use case related to garret plugin as far as i remember mark that's why mm-hmm. it it was provided there so um so when we are not honoring ref spec and we have a uh, so what we'll have is we'll have a wide ref spec and wide means that we will we'll be fetching all the branches so we don't have even if we are avoiding the second fetch it doesn't matter it doesn't matter because uh, we have all the branches so there will be no repository uh, data loss if we avoid the second fetch but only only when we could uh, when we could have a po- possible scenario where we could lose some data is when we have a narrow uh, ref spec that i am i am just fetching a particular branch in the first call and in the second and and since i'm avoiding the second call which would have uh, in the earliest before the fix which would have uh, fetched all the branches i possibly could lose all the refs all uh, some some of the branches or some of the data i have so uh, this is the first thing we have to consider when we are creating the solution and when we are creating the automated automated tests we have to test if this is happening or not uh questions there because i think i'm not giving a very uh, good description here do do you guys have questions for for this particular scenario then i'm going to explain the, the next scenarios i figured out yeah so i th- i think i've understood it so so what you've highlighted is that this is much more complicated than or this one this one already had a complication this one i'm comfortable with continue with your next okay Cause, so cuz uh, the the uh, the next one i think is the one that's got that i was completely perplexed by until what you learned okay so so after that what i understood uh, so one of the unit tests was failing uh, was failing uh, because of my fix and that was uh that was because of uh, a behavior and additional extension we gave the, which is called clean before checkout so because of that unit test i understood that when i'm avoiding the second fetch i'm also avoiding some of the the behavior which we provide because of the fetch command so so what i did to make sure that i'm not missing out anything i create i created an exhaustive list of possible behaviors we have and what is related to git clone which is git init plus fetch or what is related to the fetch command so after creating uh, that list I, i basically listed all the options here which we could possibly have i under i what i could understand was that with the fetch command we provide clean before checkout we provide prune stale branch that is pruning the branch and then we provide pruning uh, the stale tag uh, apart from these the clone command and the fetch command they have common uh, they have common options so so what so the point here is the point of highlighting uh, this thing is that i if i want to avoid the second fetch i need to i need to add these behaviors to the first clo uh, to the first call and if i don't do so i will be missing out some of the additional behaviors which we will be providing so those behaviors i've uh, found out is clean before checkout it's pruning both the branch and tag so with clean before checkout i think it's so my solution to this problem to this uh, problem is to basically add features to the clone api to provide all the features which are missed while we are skipping the second fetch call and uh i and this is uh, why this is uh, according to me uh, a good solution because we're not breaking any functionality any compatibility i'm not changing the fetch command in any sense i am adding few things to the i would have to add few things to the clone command and to the clone api and i also check that we are not using this clone api apart from using it for cloning the repository for the first time in this step only and in test cases so um this is why i chose this solution and so to implement this solutions few things we would have to do is first to uh, 
uh, the option clean before checkout, I would have to add it to the clone step. And I think for that, it's it's very it's pretty simple because uh, the we we just have to clean. We just have to perform git clean for for this option. It basically uh, cleans the uh, the working directory, uh, the current working directory, right? The, the, that is what git clean uh, does. So for to to migrate this option to to the first fetch call to the first clone call i would have to change the clone command i would just have to i would not have to change the clone command i would have to implement the clone command in the uh, clean before checkout option i have done that and i have raised a pr for that uh, i will link it i I'll, I'll post it on the gitter channel after doing that there are two more things which uh, and the second concern i had was is there a difference between the advanced clone options which are which is provided by the git fetch api and the git clone api and what i find found out was uh, the differences which which might not be of the concern for us here but still i wrote the differences the first was that uh, ref specs we we add ref, ref specs in the case of git clone and in, in in the case of git fetch we have to we have to add them while we are calling the git fetch in case of git clone we are not doing that uh, and the second is where we we expand the references using the environment uh, in the case of clone command we are not doing that in fetch command but but i assume that that was done uh, thinking that the first fetch the first call is always going to uh, expand it so the second would not need to do that so that is why it was uh, it was removed it was not there for the um, for the decorate fetch command actually i think it's just a bug in decorate fetch uh, oh okay because I, because it, it should have resolved in both places right that i i think i've actually got a bug report we have a bug report that specifically says it should have expanded variable references in dec in the fetch in addition to the clone so okay uh, so the Okay, I'll, I'll look into it. I look. In, is there an existing issue? You're saying that. I believe there is. Yes, there. There are several. There are several issues around places where the plugin does not correctly expand environment variables, and I think RefSpecs is one of them. There may even be a pending PR to fix the expansion uh, of RefSpecs. Yeah, I, I raised that PR, Mark. Oh, that was you. Oh, sorry, Rishab. Yeah, and that's okay. So, um, okay, so, so we will. So the next thing we have here is prune. So the issue I have here is with pruning, uh, the and the issue with pruning is that pruning is it, it's it's related to git fetch. It's not provided in git clone. So so when I'll be although in git clone we are basically doing git init plus plus git fetch. So uh, logically it won't make a difference. But if I'll be adding pruning as an option option in clone command and then in the clone api i assume that that makes it a little confusing um, the the only issue i had with shifting it or adding it to that api is that clone doesn't provide pruning and i would be adding that as an option to uh, to accommodate uh, for to accommodate for this particular issue so uh, that's a concern i have that's that's it's a problem i have while shifting it for for uh, the clean before checkout, I think it's it's pretty easy. But for pruning, either the branch or tag, that's the issue I have. So these are the scenarios I've explored right now. Uh, I want to know if the, first of all, all of the things I've said, questions, and then secondly, am I missing things which I should should I more look more uh, should I look more deeply? Where am I missing things? So, so yeah, I haven't detected anything that you're missing at all, and I'm delighted for the analysis you've done. And I think that adding the prune, those those prune options, is exactly the right thing to do, because the thing that that the git that the git client plugin calls clone command is yes. is a conceptual thing, more yes. than it is a, a specific promise to call git clone. Because it's it's never been able to call git clone, right? Yes. It's yeah. when when the earlier maintainers attempted to call git clone, they very quickly realized, oh, I can't define this and I can't define this, and they reverted back to init plus fetch. 
Now, there are certainly, there have been requests asking, please call Git clone. But in order to do that, we would have to lose functionality. And so, mm -hmm. so that's, that's not really palatable right now. Therefore, I think your proposal to add capabilities to the clone command makes, mm -hmm. makes good sense. Okay, so um, uh, then, just to put yeah. uh, Mark, just to put one point over here. So, uh, are we taking into consideration any future changes that Git fetch might have? Though though it is not that much uh, frequent changes, like Git is not that much frequently changing. But in case any new functionality comes, so we'll have to incorporate that in our uh, code also, right? If if there are additional features and yeah. and there are certainly examples of that already things like large file support which yep. might well be better done inside clone command than where it is currently being done so but i don't think that what rishab's proposing harms our ability to add future extensions he's just adding extensions in a in a very reasonable way to clone command fran does that that seem reasonable to you Yes, uh, I don't think that we are going to lose any uh, capability, but uh, I unmute myself because I wanted to ask about the possible impact in the performance of the uh, in the clone command. So performance is, in the clone. Okay. Sorry. Is your yes. is your concern that the extensions being added may harm performance of clone? Uh, yes, if I've understood, uh, if I've understood properly, uh, Richard' proposal, uh, we are moving uh, some features to the clone command, so we are not doing. So we are doing the the prune, and the, and we are going to do the uh, just to try to avoid the second. A fetch command. So, is uh, I was wondering about how that can impact in the in the performance. Yeah, and I it would be think... exactly the same performance, but or is something that is acceptable? I don't know. Maybe. So I, yeah, good question. So today. The the thing that, that the git that the git client calls clone command is actually an implementation of init plus fetch. It's then followed by another call to fetch. So fetch first, and then it's called by a second call to fetch, and then the extensions that that have been added, the the the, the cleans. And so I think what Rishab is suggesting is his goal is still just to, in terms of git operations, remove the redundant fetch. But continue persist in calling the extra extensions. The prune today is implemented as a separate call to Git. It, it calls a Git a Git prune or various techniques. Rishab, did I express that fairly, or do you want to give yes. more clarification? I, I think my my aim is to and uh, to answer uh, Fran's question, maybe if I can is if we are performing uh, git in it plus git fetch and if we are adding something which is already being done in the next fetch uh, why would it be a concern of performance uh, I, I i cannot i cannot understand that yeah the, the hope the hope and again this is there are things in in command line git that are subtleties that i don't i don't expect but i think your logic is is fair rishab that it probably won't affect performance, and we should bench. We should measure it just to be sure. Maybe, yeah. We we I can create a benchmark to uh, test what Fran is saying. I think that'd be a good thing. I think more practice for benchmarking is great. So yeah, I'll I'll do that. And um, yes, I think the the main aim is to uh, avoid it and and do not lose any kind of uh, use cases, any possible use cases we have. I think do it the most safest way possible. So, yeah. And uh, after this, uh, I think the necessary, the most necessary thing is creating automated test cases. I think the before and after scenarios for, so what I was thinking was to, uh, since I have the fixed PR, uh, fixed branch, I have that, I'll, I'll, 
I was thinking of cutting branches from that uh, particular branch for each of the shifts I'm going to do, of the additions I'm going to do. And, uh, and I wanted to do that and not in a single branch. The reason was that so that we can discuss uh, individually the changes like, like uh, Fran has a concern related to one of the, maybe pruning or maybe because of some other option. So we can discuss them individually. And I have individual test cases for each of the changes in the clone command. So, uh, so I was thinking of doing that. That was my plan. I, I like that. And I like that very much. Incremental, incremental sounds really good. I'm, I'm really grateful for what you've discovered because it was a subtlety that I had completely missed in my code review. I, I simply could not explain why the, the test was failing with your initial change. Like, what do you mean? All we did was take out one fetch. It can't possibly have stopped cleaning. And yet what your, your analysis showed was, oh yes, it did stop cleaning. And it stopped cleaning because the extension is not registered in the first yes. call. It's registered only in the second call. Second call, yes, yeah. So, so I think it was great that uh, we already had great unit tests for it. Uh, well, if we did not have the unit test, I would never discover it. I, I'd like, say it differently. It's, it's, it's pathetic that we only had one test that caught that failure when there were three or more extensions that should have caught the failure, right? You, you found at least three cases that, that should have yes, been detected that, and only one of them failed. Yeah, that also, I, I, I had that question that why did not uh, pruning stale branches or pruning stale tags, we, we could not, uh, we, we should have tests we, which would, right. I, I would add them when, while I'm creating those shifts. Excellent. So, uh, and I also wanted to discuss uh, one more thing. I think we were almost exactly well, so, so. Yeah. I would ask the, the other mentors, would you be willing to remain online? This feels like a very effective session. I've got at least another 30 minutes that I could give. Uh, if other mentors are available, we'd be delighted to have you stay because it, it feels like we're on a, on a very productive discussion topic. Good for me. Okay, great. Yeah, Rishabh, let's continue. Let's take up to up to another 30 minutes. Be right back. Okay. <laughs> okay, Mark. So uh, the next thing I wanted to discuss was not related to get uh, for to this particular issue. It was, it was more related to uh, the design document uh, and why I could not, uh, as of this moment, have a consolidated design document. Because uh, while in the community bonding, we were discovering things, I, I felt that it, the document was more of an investigation rather than a consolidated design. And now when we, when we actually have a benchmark running in the, uh, the tank in CI and, and, and some discovery related to this issue, now I think I, I, have, um, I have a lot to put in the design document and all the discoveries, all the results we have related to the benchmarks and the profiling. And I just wanted to say that I'm going to consolidate all of that and going to release the document uh, within one or two days so that people can look at the approach. Mentors can look at the approach I have taken for the benchmarks and for the things I'm doing here. Because I, I think the benchmarks have not been, they, the, we have seen the results, but uh, the technique, the way I'm doing things, I think there's, there's a need for us to review the way I'm doing it. So, so that was one of the concerns. And... Um, other is that I have to work upon uh, implementing uh, performance as, as an opt-in behavior. That's, that's something I have to figure out a way to do. Uh, and uh, I think uh, the, another thing I have to do is testing the GMH visualizer plugin. That's something I, I still I haven't tried. So I am going to do that this week. And uh, I think since we have more time, so just going to look on my notes what I, what we can discuss here it get i think uh, we can discuss uh, we can discuss uh, so i ran a benchmark on uh, get to to show that when we are uh, using double fetch what is the performance and when we are not what is the performance and uh, so I, I've shown this result to Mark during my proposal discussions. Not sure if you remember it, Mark, but uh, so, 
so how i created this benchmark let's let's first discuss that so i have four tests and uh, the tests basically what they do is the initial two tests what they do is the first one is just calling one fetch command the second one is also calling one fetch command it's kind of a baseline test to create uh, a reference point the first one with the first one i am just fetching the master branch with the second one i am fetching all the branches so it's it's kind of a, a, a narrow ref spec versus a wide ref, ref spec comparison and um, after that the next two tests i created the benchmarks they highlight if we use the fetch operation twice how much time do we gain and uh, that is done with honoring ref spec and when we are honoring the ref spec that means that and with that i mean that the first fetch call is going to be narrow in this test and the second is going to be wide and with the second test both are going to be wide because we are not honoring the ref spec for the initial clone that's the option we have right so the tests i think they clearly show that once we are using the double fetch call uh, the execution time is almost doubled in every case though in cases of large repositories it should have it should have considerably doubled because uh, as far as i remember mark uh, told me that uh, with small repositories this is not a concern but with large repositories it's 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 much of a big concern bigger concern the double fetch issue so um, so this this benchmark i created while i was writing my proposal so maybe there might be some issue with the way i've created the benchmarks that we're not able to see the differences i'm also skeptical about uh, jvm optimization if if i'm performing one operate if i'm performing an operation twice same operation would the jvm optimize it would the J, the when we are measuring the second call would it reduce the time for that I, call that's uh, I, what, yeah. I so to to that question i would assume that jmh is doing its very best to attempt to give you preheated environments so that the jvm is already as as cached or as optimized as it's going to be for the first run and therefore the first run and the second run would would have comparable results i think your numbers that you had done earlier supported that as well that the preheat phase seemed to seem to stabilize seemed to be enough that the that the actual runs were quite stable and and the but the only concern i have is with the large repositories uh, the time is it's it's not it should double or be something like that but it's it's not actually i i would not have expected it to double on large repositories that, that, so that's a that's a the git should be quite efficient at realizing and there's no work to do on the second fetch oh it's it's an so okay. it should have been it should have actually been okay. the second fetch should have been a no op but but it's it's not a no op and the fact that it's not a no op is what what has astonished a number of our users wow you asked fetch again and i i had to spend another one minute getting that fetch on my big repository uh, omkar go ahead you say you had a question uh, yep uh, rishab so you told like uh, in the first one when you did the clone of fetch so it just pulled the master branch right yep. and in the second one it pulled all the branches existing right yes so uh, how many branches were there in total just for information uh okay so i have i'm testing these benchmarks for four repositories and okay. with each repository the the number of branches increase for the first one it's just one branch for the second one as far as i remember it's around 6 then it it's 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 around i think 10 to 15 for the third one and it, for the last one i think it's it's the most i don't remember exactly the number of branches i i think i can show you uh, the number of branches for each of the repository okay so uh, one more thing uh, what i doubt is like uh, it depend like one of the factor is the size of the repo definitely and the second factor can be like the difference differences that are there in the branches like uh, one code has 100 commits and second uh, branch has like 200 different commits so 
pulling that together will cost git a lot not just like uh, one repo is heavy enough but there are no differences in the branches that will be i think lightweight and git might be optimizing it okay so what you're saying is that i have i also have to consider the commit history the structure of uh, the repository as well maybe, while i maybe yep yeah yes, that might be a, one of the factor yeah and and i and when i was creating the benchmarks that was the initial assumption i so i i took a very structured repositories when i'm increasing the size i'm also increasing the number of commits and the number of branches i actually okay. if i can open the design doc i let me just if i can find the link to the document yeah okay so i have it here i'll show you uh, the structure for the repositories okay Yeah, so these are the four repositories, and this is the structure. The number of branches they increase, okay, considerably while we're increasing the size, and the number of commits as well increase. Okay, I think we can take that factor into consideration. Like in the second one, you have fourteen branches, so we can create some differences in the commits in those fourteen branches and try once. Well, so okay. so I'm I'm less concerned about variation. There, I think you've got good sanity checks here, Rishab. So I, hmm. I, yes, there there may be differences, but whatever set of differences we choose is going to have some examples out in the real world which are radically different from that set. So so okay. I'm I, I so to, I'm sort of I guess disagreeing in this case with Omkar and saying I wouldn't spend your time right now worrying about varying the number of branches, rather. We accept that we have empirical data from users that say the second fetch is not free. And, and now mm. we're going to keep measuring to see what do we see in our benchmark environment? Is the second fetch free? And uh, so okay. does, does that, does that seem Omkar, are you okay with that as my, as my shameless argument, as my shameless no, no, proposal? I've <laughs> that that is totally fine so uh, what i was considering like uh, he was talking like, uh, he didn't notice any that much significant difference which he had expected in those graphs so for generating that difference intentionally i was like suggesting this that can be one of the factor to impact okay. that graph. right and and rishab if we get to the point where we want to evaluate omkar's the 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 permutation he's describing i actually have a poster child uh, and a, a near perfect example repository that I use all the time called Jenkins dash bugs. It's filled okay, with Jenkins. 150 or more independent branches that all evolve independently. And it, it is a complete, it is a complete mess in terms of its content and it's intentionally a mess. So, so, so we have a repository and it's about 40 or 50 megabytes right now. So it's, it's, it's in the middle between your, it's between core utils and Cairo in, in terms of its current size and it just keeps growing. Okay, Jenkins hyphen bugs. That is what yeah, I said, uh, right? do not do not do anything with it right now, but if we get to the point where we need to evaluate something that yeah. is pathological or that okay. is, is really terrible, I have a really terrible example. That we we'll do that <laughs> one before we do the, the Linux kernel. All right. The Linux kernel is is even further down than that. <laughs> okay. Okay, Mark. So uh, I think after this, uh, what I would like to say is that the tasks I would I would perform after this discussion is that I would uh, raise three different PRs for the uh, addition uh, of the behaviors. I'm going to shift, not shift, but copy from the fetch command to the clone command and to the clone APIs. And uh, with that, the automated tests included in the PR is only. And then uh, apart from that, I would have a, a benchmark to test the differences Fran was talking about in the performance. And uh, I think while I'm doing that, so these are the, for the next week, I think these three 
the, the two tasks I have uh, in terms of coding. The third I can possibly possibly have is of uh, researching how I can implement uh, the 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 Git the opt-in feature for the Git performance for the performance uh, benchmarking improvements you're going to do. So yeah, any uh, concerns related to the tasks I have or yeah. I like those. Would you be interested in presenting to the platform special interest group a week from tomorrow with whatever results you have at that point? Sure, sure, Mark. Yes, I think I'll, I'll have the benchmarks related to this issue. And, uh, and I think we would have benchmarks related to the infrastructure, all the benchmarks we have from the infrastructure runs. So maybe I can, I can discuss that. Okay, and if and you'd like, I could discuss that. Yeah, I would love it if you don't mind giving 10 or 15 minutes or a five or 10 minute summary of, hey, here's what we've learned since the last time. I think it's been about four weeks since you last talked at the at the platform yes. SIG. And so Almost it would be a great excuse to share, share your results up to that point, to highlight progress, to indicate problems, et cetera. Okay, sure, Mark. Okay. When is that meeting, Mark? It happens each Thursday at uh, 6 a.m. Mountain Time. So, Justin, okay. it's it's almost unbearably early for you. It's 5 a.m. your <laughs> local time, and I, I'm sorry for that. But that's that's when the contributors to that particular special interest group could meet. So we do it very early so that we yep. fit with the European schedule and with one of our colleagues from Broadcom who really likes to get up early in the morning, even though he lives in Phoenix, Arizona. <laughs> Time zones are hard. Right. <laughs> I get it. <laughs> okay, so I think that's that's it from my side. Uh, that is what I wanted to discuss. So yeah, I, also I'm going to look uh, for the conditional logic in Jenkins file. The thing we discussed. That's something I'm going to look at first. Well, and, and we, Rishab, we, that one is a little. That one has a sense of urgency for me because yes, I'm yeah. preparing the for the next release of the Git client plugin, and it's. There are times when it's slowing down my progress. So yes, if that one could get more time from you, I would be very grateful. I'll, I'll, I'll do it first. Thank I'll you. Explore that first, yeah. Okay, so should we end the meeting? I think, unless, unless yeah. other mentors have other questions or comments, other I questions, think we can yeah. call this done. No, I mean, I think you did a great job like in your analysis. Uh, if you need help with the conditional logic, Mark said, reach out to, to folks. Uh, that's okay. great. Okay, that's it. Ciao. All right. Thanks, okay, everybody. Bye. Bye. Bye.